Flomashkaram and Flomaste. My name is Sumed Chatterjee. Welcome back to the channel. We're back with Aligned Alien April. Today is day seven, a lucky number. And therefore, we must introduce the guard, the guard, the guard, the luck, 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 the a lot of you are confused by that name. Long Wang represents the yang energy, okay? When you have the yin and the yang, this represents that masculine frequency. Well, maybe I'm a dragon. I mean, talk about big dick energy, right? Like this, <laughs> this, is, this is an exact uh, example of that, okay? Now let's drop our immaturity first and foremost, okay? I know his name is Long Wang. We, we've got to start to understand the power of this being, okay? He is the dragon king of the four seas, north, south, east, west, okay? So he guards mostly all of China and the imperial lineage of China, of royalty and wealth and abundance. The dragon coats and the dragons mostly used to be associated with the higher class or emperor class in China. So emperors had this like VIP ticket towards the dragon wisdom. Now we've got to understand that there's a lot of differences between dragons in different cultures. There's the Celtic uh, dragon, then we have much more, you know, these depictions of, of dragons being destructive or fierce and, and you know, burning uh, knights with fire and so forth. In China, it's not so much associated with the breathing of the fire that much, uh, though, Dragons are meant to breathe fire, but I more so believe they're blazing truth along the path. So we at Primal Sutra, we work with dragon magic, okay? Specifically, Vajra dragon magic. The electricity of the yang essence and how we can tap into that in order to get us towards our specific outcomes and goals. So when I first channeled the Dragon King, I got these very, very interesting downloads where he was all almost calling out all of our BS, okay? And just pointing out all of the red flags, right? Basically getting us to the truth, okay? And that's the frequency of the dragon energy, is truth. Don't work with a dragon if you're a pathological liar. It's not gonna be, or it might be good for you because it's gonna call out all your BS and then you'll finally change. Long since the dawn of time, actually, we've worshipped reptiles. I don't know if you guys knew this, okay? But I also got this information from the Dragon King that reptiles, certain lizards, they have their third eyes activated. Sometimes we see certain lizards uh, in the ancient Hindu times as fire resistant. Some refer to them as shapeshifters. Other claims have been made that the world's elites are lizards, okay? And, you know, Mark Zuckerberg came along and, and you know, kind of ruined the plan for everybody by saying this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with no on that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a lizard. Because you're human, and, and I was human. I am human, still. Um... Irregardless, it's important to note that the reptiles were associated with being from the sky. Now, to me, that sounds like a dragon. I don't know about you. I understand that though Dragon King has a very short temper, he does get angry quite a bit. I think that anger is justified. The anger is justified because he is a supreme dealer of justice. And if you look at Rudra, okay, one of the angry forms of Shiva, you notice that if you keep anger inside you and you keep it all passive aggressive, that's not anger. That's the repression of anger, right? And so Sometimes you just need to, ah, you need to let that anger out, right? You can't just keep it stored into your body and then not expressing it any time. Now, obviously you don't want to harm people, hurt people, throw glass, you know, these kinds of things. I don't have to say that unless you're a moron, but you know what I mean, right? Like that kind of hostility or hostile behavior is not going to serve you in the long term. It's just going to give you fucked up memories, okay? So... Using anger constructively has been a big lesson from Long Wang. I believe in, in Africa, they had this little lizard too called Nomoli. So though he has a short temper, he's very kind, man. 
and he's actually very, very wise. I mean, wise beyond centuries, okay? Not only is he reigning over the seas, but he's taking on so many different forms. And myself as an actor in the past, and an understanding of that, I can really respect that ability to shapeshift. It's the same tech, similar tech that I'm applying to my channeling. Acting and channeling are almost same. They're like distant cousins, okay? Where you're acting in the physical world, you're channeling in the metaphysical world. We have Fafnir in Scandinavia. He began life as a dwarf and then he shapeshifted. He's tricked by Loki by killing his father with a cursed ring. So he took on a dragon form to guard his treasure. This is another theme, okay? Animals guarding treasure. Then we also have the griffin, body of a lion, head of a bird. These beasts pull the chariots of Apollo, the masculine energy again, associated with the sun, protection, guardianship. They were also shown in art as guiding uh, and protecting treasure. Bukunawa in the Philippines, great sea dragon. He swallowed one moon every night for six days until finally Batala, another god, told this dragon, don't eat that final moon, and that's the moon that we have left, apparently, okay? I'm pointing out in the sky like it's over there, but that's usually where I see the moon, is outside my, my balcony like this. Quetzalcoatl in Central America, okay? Revered by Mayans and Aztecs as this feathered serpent. It's also the patron of wind and air. So wind and water, okay? Usually we think of water as a feminine quality. We think of wind as a feminine quality. No, these are feminine qualities being morphed into a masculine quality with the power of the dragon, the integration of that. The grace of the feminine, right? The movement of the feminine with the masculine edge, refinement, essence, okay? Then, we, of course, we have the Naga, okay? The snakes in the Hindu culture. Oh, we, we have the Makara, as we mentioned on day one. We've got to also start to understand these beings are so powerful, so powerful, that we become a part of their storyline. Do you get that? We become a part of their storyline because they're so grand in the cosmos. They show up in so many different cultures that of course we're gonna notice them. Of course we're gonna talk about them and have them be in our thought forms. Hey, some people believe that reptiles can walk on water. They have the basilisk lizard, which it's called the Jesus Christ lizard because it can walk over water like a swimming pool. You can see it. And then, of course, we have the reptile part of our brains. OK, so let's go back to Long Wang. I mean, what is Long Wang really like? OK, go puss out of here. OK, <laughs> um, silk robes. OK, anything luxurious. So gold uh, is, is a favorite, obviously. Red candles, yellow candles. Definitely a combination of, you know, carnelian or, or this kind of a, a crystal can work. By the way, working with the Dragon King, you gotta wear jade, okay? Just reminds him of the Jade Emperor and he chooses not to listen to anybody besides the Jade Emperor. So you gotta make sure that you understand who you're connected to, okay, on this path working. Because how I got to connect with the Dragon King is, first of all, we I needed recommendation from another deity who then connected to another deity and got in touch with the Dragon King, okay? So sometimes you do need endorsements in the spirit world, okay? So I'm just making that claim out there. It's not that easy to work with this energy and I could only find a way to channel it like very minimal times. Whenever we do, we find it to be a very powerful shift, especially when it comes down to really understanding the Chinese zodiacs and China is very interesting how you know is born from this energy of the spiral like two spiraling uh, dragons or or snake beings right these serpentine beings coiling around each other almost reminding you of the pharmacy logo uh, related to also Thoth and Hermes right it was the origin point and this is also the DNA spiral spiraling upwards this reminds us obviously of our upward spiral gang and everything that we've come to you know, embrace on this journey of life. I'm just looking for all of those synchronicities that tap me into the zone. Let's get it. Any water uh, related stones could work, essentially. Different types of things from the water, like algae or sea moss, or even um, 
you know, certain things like uh, seaweed, for instance, can help. So we're really trying to merge with the frequency. When we work with a specific entity or a specific deity, we've got to understand, we've got to merge with their world. That's what the real true invocation is. You've got to match yourself completely with that frequency. Okay, completely envelop yourself in that energy or that frequency, okay? So let's say you have a math test tomorrow or something, right? And you wanna tap into Long Wang's powerful yang essence or quality of just like bulldozing through this quiz. Just keep him in your mind. Just have that essence illuminate. Just buy like maybe a dragon pendant or a bracelet. Get like a tattoo of a dragon. Get like something, you know, which reminds you of a dragon. Change your phone screen to this dragon. Okay, they're very, very honored because they represent honor. They represent power. The power to change things, the power to do things. Isn't that the young force of this entire civilization and world that keeps peering through the edge and moving forward with this masculine energy, right? And I don't think we as men respect that masculine energy enough. You know, like it's there but we don't give it enough importance. We don't hold it, we don't cherish it. The fact that masculinity can be such a beautiful thing, it doesn't have to be this toxic thing the media has painted it out to be. Men just being men, there's something so attractive about that. You get that? Now, now let's take the opposite, a bunch of men being feminine in a group together. Now I'm not inciting shame, I'm really not, okay? But as a man, you've got to honor your own young masculine frequency. If you don't, life will show you. Life will show you. Let's just say that. Life will keep you in check. Life will make you stronger. All my life, I thought I could just be peaceful and weak my, in my entire life. You know, don't get into any conflicts. Don't do that. Don't stand up for yourself. You know, don't talk bad. Don't do this. Listen, that comes in an enlightened state. Or you've gone through the rubble and the struggle and the and the pain and the suffering, but it doesn't have to be all that suffering, okay? It can actually be that Vajra is exciting you and moving you forward, right? That caveman energy, that primal essence within every man. Then you may have locked that little uh, caveman up. You need to let that caveman out. You need to beat on your chest like Tarzan sometimes. You get what I mean? And that's the energy of Long Way. That's the same kind of energy of the sunlight, right? The sun is just shining in all directions at once. Okay? Isn't the sun a great representation of the modern renaissance, man, where it shines in all directions? It's versatile. It's adaptable. The religions of Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. Three, once again. They've been a part of East Asian culture, but also we find them in other cultures of the world. Now, as I was mentioning in another dragon video once, the dragon's fire can not only heal, it can also cleanse wounds, right? Destroy things. It can also protect things, okay? When something is burning, it's a protection. What do we do? We burn sage, we burn something, we burn a candle, we burn incense. Why? It's protection. Fire is protection. So is water. That man over there, he had a movie called Enter the Dragon, correct? Do not pray for an easy life, he said. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. This particular fighting style, right? Now, Gung Fu has a dragon form, remember? So I was speaking about the idea of it's dragging us on, right? A drag on. It's dragging us through the timeline. We don't want to go, but we have to follow the path of righteousness and truth. Okay? It's like, no, I don't want to do it. I want to stay in all this sin, man. I just want to... Come on. Let's go. You've done this before. Okay? It's like a really uh, warm-hearted father, but using that strictness of that father-dad energy. And the dad frame, I have to say, is one of the most powerful frames in humanity. Okay? If you can feel like a big daddy in any situation... Okay, sexual innuendos aside, but maybe a little bit, cause you know, I'm getting older now. <laughs> the legend of Long Wang lives on. And that's, sounds like my memoir. 
<laughs> but the, the legend of Long Wang lives on, right? And we start to understand that our pureness, our truth towards our path working is really what is going to guide us or move us forward. Okay? The finishing line is right here, my friends. And we must claim it. We must claim our thrones. So let us all pray to the Dragon King so that he can support us and guide us on this path working of the masculine Vajra Dragon. Let's get it. Upward Spiral Gang, may we never be the same again. Like, comment, subscribe, you already know. Hit the notification bell. And hey, do not be afraid of going slowly. Be afraid of standing still. That's what I want to leave you with. Let's get it, Upward Spiral Gang. Much love to all the Chinese watchers. That was just a joke. We got this, Upward Spiral Gang.